I love Andrew F. Coyne. Um, I do, I do like and respect the opinion because I think it does have some really great language in it, but the opinion scares the bejesus out of me, and I'll tell you why. Number one, and most importantly, was a point that Frank made, that this court avoided the issue of equal protection. The fact that this court ducked that question and said, we're not gonna talk about that. Well, if your rights are not grounded in the Constitution, it is so easy, it is so easy for the lower courts to ignore that, that reality. So I, for me, when I read those words in this decision, I was right away turned off and I went over to the other side. Uh, but there are other, there's other language in there. According to the child's unique needs, according to where the child is then. So many of the cases in special ed, we don't get into uh, a court system or into an administrative hearing until after the child has been abused, yes, abused by the quote unquote educational system that he's had to been subjected to for four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 years. That's when we get our children in court. And it's very deliberate. I am, God love me, a former teacher. I was a certified school teacher in the state of Pennsylvania before I ever even thought about law school. And as a certified school teacher, I know one thing for sure and two for certain, that if you don't have a lesson plan, you don't know what you're doing in that classroom. Go into a special ed class and ask to see the lesson plan. You can go in as a substitute teacher and you never get a lesson plan. If there is no lesson plan, there is no lesson. Ask me about the curriculum that they use. There is no curriculum. Everything is at the discretion of the special education teacher. More often than not, that special education teacher has a white man's burden complex. Okay? White man's burden. Oh, he's so cute though. Oh, you know, we I really love him. I was just at a um at a um mediation in Eastern District of California. And I, I wanted to smack the woman, to tell you the truth. I really did. Because what she came, what she came up there and said, we just love Arturo. We love him. I wanted to say, where was your love when in fifth grade you refused to implement a subtraction goal because he was having so many problems with his addition goal when you gave him the same paper to do every day? 60 days of the same exact paper to do. Some days he'd get them all right, some days he'd get them all wrong. It's like pushing a button, I push the button today, push the button, I don't want to push the button tomorrow. How debilitating it is for a child who, it, who has understanding, he knows what's going on. But to have to look at the teacher day after day after day. And when the mother told me, and this, and, and this is my shame, when the mother told me they keep giving them the same work over and over again, and I'm thinking, oh, the same work, oh, the same work. She brought me those pages. She brought me those pages. And I wanted to smack myself. Wake up, Barbara, because they were the exact same page of, I think it was a not four cross, five down, 20 problems. The exact same 20 problems every day. That was his math lesson, where the teacher did not think that he should be able to accomplish a subtraction goal. Teacher didn't think he could do that, but she gave him this. That to me was cruel and unusual punishment. So when we think about these IEPs, I'm for show me your lesson plan. Show me the curriculum that you're using. Special day classes or special daycare. That's all it is. 
They just babysit those children. And when you take a child for five years of his life and you put him through that educational process, at the end of that educational, pro educational process, you will have a defeated child because he doesn't think he can do any better. It's not that they tell him. This is worse than Brown versus Board of Education. Brown versus Board of Education at least focused on the equal protection clause. That's what Brown versus Board of Education was all about. And but we, you know, we're happy Brown versus Board of Education. So let's copy Brown as we move forward with IDEA. Let's think about Brown as we move closer to IDEA. Let's not avoid that, even though. I'm writing a paper now on the fact that Brown was a failure uh, because there's more segregation of African-American kids in today's educational system than it was before Brown, <laughs> which is absolutely horrific. But I'm going to leave you with this because we want to hear Tom. I'll leave you with this. How many of you saw the, the movie Hidden Figures? The most dramatic part in that movie for me was when that woman who wanted to be an engineer. I don't remember which one she was, but she wanted to be an engineer, and she walked into that courtroom, and she smiled so nice and so politely, because that's what Southern women do. At least the Southern women in my family do. They smile so nice and so politely, and she had that judge figured out, okay? And when he said to her, well, this, this is Virginia. So of course we don't follow Brown. That's that stuff up there. But we're in Virginia. Ooh, right across the little 95. Go 95 a little bit, right? We're in Virginia, so we don't pay attention to that Brown decision. And the reality is that we, as attorneys, fight so hard, so often. And we're going to take these words. I'm going to take these words, and I'm going to do as good a job as I can do with the words in, in Andrew F. I really am, but I'm afraid of these words because these words continue to stigmatize children with disabilities, continue to say that school districts, you have an out. And as a matter of fact, in that mediation I told you about, went to the mediation, we have to do a statement before the mediation. Both sides do a statement. Both of us were citing Andrew F. They were citing Andrew F. and I was citing Andrew F. And the interesting thing was, we don't see each other's mediation statement before we prepare our own, because we have to submit them simultaneously. The interesting thing was, we were citing the same damn words. So that, and, and I know Roberts, that's a smart man. Roberts is smart. He didn't let anybody else write that decision, and he didn't let anybody else write that decision because he admired Rehnquist so much, he wanted that 25 years of legacy that Rehnquist had left us and all the confusion that we've ended up with in the courts because of, of Rehnquist's rally decision and what the hell is FAPE anyway. And he left us with a bigger mess, in my opinion, because it's something that the school districts can use today to take the same words and throw them in our face. And like Judy said, you get a judge who's, whose prejudices are that, oh, well, what are we doing with these kids in school anyway? And we go right to the same issue, right to the same issue.